Civil Truth. I'm John Furness. We've been uh, looking at repentance in the last few weeks, and, and now I want to do a study on in Christ and what it means to be in Christ and, and how we need to stay in Christ, that we, there is a warning in the, in the middle of this message that it will come out. But I want you to turn to uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. It's a familiar passage that we're going to be looking at, but but I want to bring out the whole whole thing in it as we go. Uh, starting with verse 1, uh, there's a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, uh, a ruler of the Jews. Now, Nicodemus was was uh, what, what I've seen from, from study is he's one of, one of the rich men in the city. Uh, he is a Pharisee, uh, which means he was a, a teacher. He was part of the ruling class of the Sanhedrin, so he's a, he's a well established in, into the uh, Jewish religion and and a man of some prominence there. <clears throat> and yet, in verse two, this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, "Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him." Note that he came at night now. It was, sometimes we kind of, you know, get after that idea that he comes at night, but it's not at night that he, he comes at night, but, but it's not because he's afraid. It's because he's wanting to talk to Jesus uh, without having any hindrance from anyone else. And it, it says, you know, calls him teacher, calls Jesus teacher. Here is a Pharisee calling Jesus teacher. And the reason for that is because of the signs and wonders that Jesus has done that they know about and that it's been confirmed that he has to have come from God or he has to be a man of God uh, to do these things. So in verse 3, Jesus answers him uh, and says to him, Most surely I say to you, unless you is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So here Jesus is pronouncing a a spiritual truth to him, um, but let's face it, we don't always pick up when we're, we're hearing uh, a new truth being taught to us. Uh, verse 4, Nicodemus said, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? So here Nicodemus is thinking earthly. He's thinking naturally. Um, well, how can this be possible? Well, Jesus wasn't talking about the natural birth that, he, that Nicodemus had already received. He's talking about the supernatural one, the, the spirit of birth that he's talking about. Verse 5, Jesus answered, Most surely I say to you, unless one is born of water and the, the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Now, uh, before we go on here, uh, he's making the point that you need to be born uh, again to see the kingdom of God, uh, and that is a spiritual birth that he's talking about, not a physical one. It is a changing of... of uh, relationship okay uh, when we're born into this world you know through a woman we are born into the natural world but here Jesus is trying to as he as he does in all the gospels he tries to take uh, a person from seeing the natural and thinking in the natural to thinking in the spiritual realm and Jesus is saying, you once had a relationship with the natural realm, but now I want to give you a spiritual realm, a kingdom of God that you will be part of, that you will know through the Spirit. Uh, 
And he's talking about, you know, whatever is born of flesh is flesh. In other words, that's your nature. That's what you want to do. That's what you think. But if it's born of the spirit, it's spirit. It means that, that though you live in a natural body, your, your perspective has been changed to a spiritual one to where it now instead of doing what you want to do, it is what the spirit wants you to do. The good things that God wants us to do, the good works he wants us to do. We've changed natures in a sense, okay? Uh, we're putting on Christ and not the old nature, okay? Um, we have a new father in a sense, okay? Uh, now, he goes on in his verse 8, he says, The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the, the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, what he's, he's taking a natural thing. We know what the wind is. We know that we can't see it unless there's something else in the wind, you know, as dust or, or uh, leaves or something of that nature, you know, smoke, smoke. Uh, is in the wind that you can see it, but you don't know where it came from. You don't know where it's going. And it's the same way with the Spirit. You cannot see it, but you can feel the reflect, you know, the, the uh, aspects of it in the sense that we now know that of spiritual things. See, when we're born again, until that time, we have no concept of what the Word of God says. It's a nice book, okay? Uh, the same as any other novel that you might read, you know. But when the Spirit comes in, then you start to understand the spiritual meaning of what the Word is bringing out. It becomes alive to us, and it takes the Holy Spirit to bring the word alive so that we can understand it and so that we can follow what Christ is, is teaching us and, and seeing us, okay? Uh, verse 9, Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this thing be? And Jesus answers and said to him, You are a teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Uh, here, here's the thing that, that Jesus is trying to get across, and, and this is the only time that really Jesus really, you know, what we call get on his case about, um, is that you're a teacher of Israel, but yet you don't understand. And the thing of it is, they've not experienced the spirit realm of it. Do you understand that, that though the four Gospels are in what we call the New Testament, the New Testament doesn't really start until Jesus dies on the cross. Just like a will of a person uh, has been written up and and done the legal thing to it, that piece of paper is no good until you know, you die, and then it comes into force. Okay, well, the same way is here. We're still in the Old Testament, and that's why Jesus had to do all the things that pertain to Old Testament law, is because until he died on the cross, the Old Testament was still in effect, in a sense. So, and understand that in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit only was on certain people. He's not been poured out on all flesh like uh, that knows Jesus, that accepted Jesus as it is today, but it was only on certain ones. Not everyone had the Spirit. And, and it takes the Spirit for us to understand what the Word of God is saying. It took the Spirit for them to understand what the Old Testament was saying and needing, except when the people that the Spirit was on revealed it. Okay? So, um, here he's saying, you know, you haven't experienced this 
as, as you can or will in the future uh, as a born again person. So, you know, and he's saying because you are of flesh or, or you are of the natural world, you're not going to accept our testimony. You can't because it's not being made alive to you by the Holy Spirit that brings life to the word and to us. Okay. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? In other words, you know, <clears throat> I'm telling you things about the earthly things and you're not really believing that or understanding that, then there's no way you're going to understand the heavenly things without the Holy Spirit. Verse 13, but no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's, let's take a look at these verses real quick. Uh, he's talking about no one has ascended into heaven, but he who came down from heaven. Okay. He's talking about Jesus himself. Okay. Now, we know from the Old Testament that they've been several that has ascended into heaven, not on their own power. Okay. They were taken up. Enoch was taken up. Elijah was taken up. Okay. They wasn't taken up on their own power. They was taken up by the Spirit of God. So, but here he's talking about the one who was ascend, who descended and ascended under his own authority, his own power, which is Christ Jesus. And then he goes, and then he tells him of a, in a sense, prophecy that when you look at the Old Testament, Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. So he's giving him a hint of how Christ is going to die, that Jesus is going to be crucified on a pole. Now, when he talks about Moses, we see that, that type, okay? Uh, the Israelites were uh, once again, you know, murmuring against God and Moses for taking them away from Egypt and taking them out here in the desert and they're going to die and, and all that. Uh, and you read that in, in, in the Numbers. Uh, but they were serpents there, and when they got bit by the serpent, it, it either was poisonous or it caused great pain. So they, Moses, God told Moses to, to put a serpent on a, a brazen pole, brazen serpent. Um, you'll see, you can see though sometimes that idea with the medical field, um, a serpent winding around a pole. Um, it is a whether they realize it or not, it's a picture of Christ hanging on the cross, uh, bringing healing to the nations and to mankind, uh, bringing salvation to us. So we have a little picture here of a, of a prophecy of how Jesus is going to die. He's given to Nicodemus. <clears throat> but verse 16 is familiar with you and I all. Uh, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who should ever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, God, God the Father loved the world that he made through Christ so much that he sent his only unique son, Jesus, to come in this the world and to uh, pay the penalty of the law so that people could receive the Holy Spirit and receive Christ so that we could be saved. We could be in Christ. In ja John chapter 17, it, it tells us that Jesus wants us to not only Him be in the Father, 
but us to be in him and the Father, to stay in that, in that unity of, that, of one mindness that we're talking about, uh, to be in Christ. Uh, he loved this world, this world system is talking about, but it's also talking about this planet Earth because it is under the curse also. And it moan, you know, moans and groans for, the, for salvation to come, which will happen when, when Jesus comes a second time. Uh, but it's like we have to have faith and believe in him. And that's talking about believing in Christ, in his death, burial, and resurrection. It needs all three there so that we can have everlasting life. Now, it doesn't just stop there. It's a great beginning, and it's a gospel in a nutshell. But there's more that we need to know and understand about this salvation walk that you and I are in. Paul tells us that we should work out our salvation with fear and trembling, okay, that means while we're here on this earth, we need to walk a certain way and live a certain lifestyle to have what he's promising us here, eternal life. But we have a choice all through this life of whether we are going to receive that eternal life that Christ has for us. I want to interject here that, that whether you accept Christ or not, there is eternity. And it's your choice of where eternity is going to be. Is it going to be with Christ? Or is it going to be in torment for, the, for eternity? But all is going to be resurrected at, a, at, at their appointed time and receive what's been appointed to them by your choices that you've made. Verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Talking about the world system, but He's also talking about the world itself. Uh, you know, we have weeds and, and hurricanes and, and all this stuff going on in the world, and it, we shouldn't have that. And if we just stayed like it was in the garden, it wouldn't be. Verse 18, And he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So here it is. God does not condemn you. I want you to understand that. You condemn yourself by your actions, by the way you live, okay? He has given us the opportunity to accept Christ and to live for Christ where there is no condemnation or, or not. It, it, it's your choice, the same as it's my choice. And that's an everyday choice. It's not just a one-time uh, so many people you meet today that says, well, I got saved when I was a young person. But now I don't go to church and I'm in business and I'm, there's nothing wrong with you being in business. But if you've lost your faith in Christ, the eternity that God wanted you to have, you forfeited. And that's a terrible thing for you to do. But as long as you've got breath, I want you to understand, you can ask for forgiveness and come back. But it's got to be your choice. It's got to be what you want to do. You can't live life just any old way, the way you used to, okay? Uh, verse 19, and this is the condemnation that the light come, had come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practiced evil, uh, hates of the light, and does not come to the light, lest he, his deeds should be exposed. 
But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they may be seen done in God. So here, here's, the, here's the thing. Anyone who practices evil, anyone who practices uh, earthly things, and I'm talking about sexual, I'm talking about alcoholism, I'm talking about drugs, I'm talking about uh, envy, uh, I'm talking about hatred, um, racism, all those things are, are earthly fleshly things that, that we talk about and there's probably more that I didn't mention and that's darkness because we are being because people are being deceived by our enemy that you can do whatever you want it it's okay we have people telling young people it's okay to live outside of the marriage to live together to have to drink. To, to, we have people telling them that. And it's wrong because God is against those things. And he's asking us to live the pure life, the holy life. And the light that's come into the world that it's talking about is what Jesus did. He's come into this world to bring us light. And when we accept Christ, we accept that the Holy Spirit is given to us. And that's why we can start to see the truth of the word. We start to see the spiritual things um, that God is revealing to us and, and are able to, to you know, not only live by them, but also to teach. Jesus tells those who follow my commands, who does my commands, loves me. If you don't love Christ, you're not going to be with him. You're not going to be in Christ. And the sad thing about it is, as we'll find out in, in later, later, later lessons, excuse me, is that it's possible to walk away from Christ. I pray that none of us do, but, but it is possible. Okay? Now, let's go to chapter 8 of Romans. And I want to start with verse 1. Uh, Talking about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit after we've accepted Christ as our personal Savior. Uh, there's, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Notice there is no guilt or condemnation to those who are in Christ. Not just close, close but are in Christ, and Christ is in you, who walk not according to the flesh, in other words, according to the world, doing whatever pleases you, but according to the Spirit. You see, we are to be walking in Christ. It, Paul made the statement that it was not him who lived anymore, but Christ in him. In other words, it was not his, his way of doing what he used to do. You want to remember, Paul was the one that persecuted the church. Uh, but now he's following what the Spirit is doing. He's not in charge. Here's, here's the thing. We must realize that we have a decision to make every time that the Spirit speaks to us or calls us to an area that we can say no to, but it's always best to say yes to. But there's always that possibility that we could say no. And yet, the Spirit will work with us until we, until we finally see the wisdom of it and do what God wants us to do. Uh, now, verse two: for the spirit of, for the law of the spirit is life in Jesus Christ, that makes me free from the law of sin and death. You see, Christ gave us the authority over sin. We do not have to live in sin anymore. We do not have to live according to what feels good. To to, to put it no other way. To do what feels good. And that is the natural man that does those things. Whatever I want. Whatever promotes me. Whatever uh, makes me happy. 
That's what I want to do. That's following the flesh. But the power of the Holy Spirit in us through Christ, being in Christ, we are free from those things that is under the law of sin and death. Remember always that sin will always lead you to death. And not only does it, can it lead you to physical death, but it can lead you to the second death, which is uh, eternal damnation, uh, the lake of fire uh, for eternity. I, I told you earlier that we all have an eternity, whether it's in Christ or whether it's in hell, we have an eternity. And I, I desire that no one would make that mistake and go with what our enemy would want us to follow after. Verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through, through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. So here Jesus is telling us through, through Paul here that the law was weak. In other words, it was not good enough. It was a picture it showed us what sin was, but it didn't tell us how to take care of it, how to avoid it, how to live past it, how to uh, be able to say no to the temptations that come into our lives on a daily basis. To give a chance, uh, you know, sin comes into our lives by, by temptation so that it will draw us back into the world that we came from. But in Christ, we have the power and the authority of Christ with his Holy Spirit to be saying no to those kinds of things. But Jesus had to come in the flesh to be that example for you and I so that we would know how to live in this world and also learn how to live in eternity. So as we Walk this walk. We need to stay in Christ all of our lives. It is possible for us to walk away from Christ. But I pray that none of you do that. I pray that you always stay in the word. Not only from that experience when you had when you were young, but you having it right now. That you are seeing the word of God work through your lives by doing the right thing, by living a holy life, you'll see that it is the best thing for you and those around you as you live your life for Christ, stay in him in faith so that you become the example for your friends and family. God bless you. We'll see you next week. 